likes caving? Who likes caving? We do, we do, we do. Hey, this is Mike. It's uh, October 28th on a Sunday, and we're heading over to Marengo Cave, which is about two hours south of Indianapolis. We're going to be visiting Old Town Spring Cave, which is part of the uh, Marengo Cave caving system. And uh, it is a uh, primitive cave, so we'll be wearing our standard caving gear. There aren't any light switches. Uh, Kevin is our chauffeur today. Say hi, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> we got about uh, six people from various caving grottos or caving clubs in Indiana and Ohio going. Uh, we also have uh, the cave leader and maybe a couple fro folks from uh, Marengo Cave uh, that might be tagging along. The weather looks pretty good. It's probably in the low 50s or upper 40s and it's clear sky so we don't have to worry about the, the cave flooding which is not always a good thing to be in a cave when it's raining cats and dogs outside. So uh, we will see you at the cave. Well here we are at the cave entrance. We're going to be packing in some video equipment, some camera equipment and four HID lights which will produce probably around 27,000 lumens of light so we should be able to light up the cave pretty good for the video work let's uh, meet our cavers for the day shall we? Hello I'm Chris Parks from Bloomington Indiana uh, from the IU Caving Club and Bloomington Grotto and we're here uh, to visit Marengo Cave I'm oh, not ready yet. Oh, it's on. It's on. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Danielle Cottrell from Bloomington, Indiana Grotto in Caving Club at IU, as we are now known. And I'm along with these guys for yet another video trip. Awesome. So, yeah. Thanks, Mike. I missed uh, the green memo here. Uh, <laughs> is that a Bloomington thing? Bloomington Grotto thing? It is. It is. Um. They they, uh, uh, they they ran out of tinfoil at the store, so I hear this is the, the next best way to keep the satellites off of me. Um, I'm from Bloomington, but that shouldn't yeah. be, well, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm from Bloomington, I'm Tim Lown, and uh, uh, I think I'm safe here now, yeah. Yeah, they can't get to you. Okay. They cannot read your mind, it's okay. okay. It's What's the shamrock thing on the helmet? Uh, 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 it's partly to keep the, the, the uh, mind control lasers away, but also the limestone. Um, uh, they call me Rock Boy because things fall on my head all the time. I don't know why, but so yeah, it's good luck. My friends gave it to me. So. Okay. All right. Hi, hello. My name is Kevin Smith. I'm one, I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'm a member of the Central Indiana Guado. And um, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Glad you could make it. Hello, I'm Larry Wyman. I uh, actually am from Marengo, Indiana. I work here at, over at Marengo Cave. Uh, we're going to go into the Old Town Spring Cave today, which is a section, a section of Marengo Cave. Uh, 4,552 feet of cave. Thank you. Marengo Cave, which was discovered in 1883, is located in southern Indiana just off Route 64. It's within a reasonable driving distance from Cincinnati, Louisville, and Indianapolis. They offer a variety of cave tours including a couple of commercial trips and some wild cave trips. We are visiting Old Town Spring Cave, as Larry just mentioned which is one of their wild cave trips. Being professional cavers, we brought our own caving gear, but Marengo can lend you a helmet and a light if you go on this trip. The cave has a gated entrance to help ensure the cave remains in pristine condition and can be enjoyed by one and all. One cool historical aspect of the cave are the names and signatures written in candle soot by early Indiana Hoosiers in the late 1800s. This particular cave has over 4,000 feet in passages, so you can spend a good long time in here. 
As you make your way back to the cave, there's a passage that connects it to the larger Marengo cave. It's a pretty tight opening, and I think you almost have to be anorexic to be able to squeeze through there. And it's not a short passage. Okay, we are here within uh, Old Town Spring Cave. Uh, this is actually a junction room in the cave. The cave uh, kind of splits off in three different directions. Kind of behind us here, in this direction, over in that direction. Uh, what's interesting about this room here, uh, there's a, this is actually where townspeople used to store their fruits and vegetables. It's uh, very interesting. It's called Sweet Potato Hall. Larry talked to us about various geological formations in the cave, how they were formed, and pointed out some various cave critters that we saw like salamanders, cave crickets, and bats. You can walk through this cave mostly standing up, which is nicer for us taller guys. There are opportunities if you feel adventurous to do some crawling as you'll see later. There are other places in the cave where you can get pretty wet if you want, and muddy. I try to stay out of cave water that is like 50 degrees, but Chris, who's one of our hardcore cavers, and who also enjoys scuba diving, was eager to check out some of these wet passages. My words to him were, have at it bro. Later in the video you'll see him disappear in a small side passage where he got pretty wet. He's such an animal. As to be expected in a wild cave. There's always a place where you'll end up crawling through a low section. Fortunately, this low area was dry, so we didn't get our bellies wet, which is a good thing. This is not the tightest crawl I've been in, and even a larger person I think can make it through okay. The crawl isn't very far either, but if you are claustrophobic, this section of the cave might be a bit challenging for you. Now if you're too scared, you do have the option to bypass a crawl, but where's the adventure in that? Here comes Tim, Danielle, and Larry, who seem to make the crawl look pretty easy. All the different types of crawling. <laughs> Even though this is a wild cave, it was nice to find a sturdy ladder to help us get down from the upper section. Thank you, Marengo. The ledge is pretty high off the cave floor, 
and it would have been kind of tricky to get down on her own. As you climb up and down a ladder, you should always maintain three points of contact. For instance, both feet in one hand. This will help ensure you don't slip or fall off the thing. As the group was walking through the main passage, the spirit of the conga invaded their minds, resulting in a dance line that even the Rockettes would be jealous of. Check this out.